Day 292 of the Ukrainian War Map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian War. Jelzy here, and today is another update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to some of the most important happenings on the ground in Ukraine. And as always, I'll start off with those Russian military losses. So as of the 12th of the 12th, 2022, so in the last 24-hour reporting period, there's been an additional 620 Russian military personnel losses. So that's a little bit above average, you could certainly say there. We're currently sitting on 94,760. And a little bit above average because of all the happenings that uh, really have been going on in the last day or two, and even today, which I'll certainly get to shortly. And we'll also have a look at the hardware losses for the Russian forces in the last day as well. So armored combat vehicles, uh, oh, actually, yeah, an additional eight. That's quite a big number there. Tanks, 24, and artillery, one. So. There's been a bit of a lag in things happening, so this is a bit of a catch up because normally you don't see a 24 tank day, although I've certainly seen a 28 or a 30 tank day in the past. Now we'll jump back to the map today, guys, where we'll first again start out in Moscow and I'll just move here very, very briefly because it doesn't really relate enough. Uh, where the in the capital of well, Russia's capital of Moscow, uh, there is no shortage of shopping centers on fire. Now this one in particular is from Balashika, just south of Moscow city, in the suburbs there. So sometimes it's hard to, to make uh, sense of these things. Perhaps Russia's economy has been so heavily devastated by the war due to all of those economic sanctions that someone called in the, the Russian mafia for some type of fire insurance scam assistance of some description. Then we'll move across into the Ukraine map itself. So the uh, in the Donbass, we'll start there. So Novo Solivsky uh, in particular. I'll just zoom into there. You might remember this one just from yesterday. So if we pull up the date map, you'll see there was a small push from the Ukrainian forces in the last day. And in the previous 24-hour reporting period, it was quite the opposite there. So really a lot of back and forth going on here in this region at this settlement in particular. So if this is Russia's idea of employing a winning offensive strategy, then they really need to re-strategize their priorities. Then we'll move down a little bit to the adjacent settlement of Svartova. So Russian occupied there, of course. Where Russia's Wagner PMC or militia group is stationed here also. Quite the additional Wagner reinforcement numbers, in fact. And just today, even, they took quite the hit when Ukraine struck their army barracks right here. Which is extremely ill-timed for the Wagner group because they just moved many of their new forces here in the last week or two. And I guess I would say undoubtedly satellites, eyes in the sky, have seen the Russian army build-ups and did those precision strikes as a result. Oh, and speaking of Wagner and explosions, yet more explosions were reported at the um, Wagner Group's headquarters in Kadivka. So that's still in Luhansk. I'll just need to uh, load up here if I can find it in a timely manner. The, the map isn't zoomed in quite well, but it's right hiding around there. So the Luhansk uh, governor actually also reported that there were huge losses here, but we'll never really know for sure the real numbers. Uh, just with the way that the, uh, well, Russia operates, it's uh, kind of their MO or modus operandi to, to, to fudge the facts or fudge the details on their reports. Then we'll move across to Bakhmut just for a hot second there where we have, uh, so Pre Ukraine President Zelensky in his recent address called the city practically destroyed, quote unquote, due to the months of shelling from the Russian forces. But the bottom line is that whether or not the Russian army takes Bakhmut, it won't change the situation for Russia strategically in the Donbass because they still have another 600 or so settlements to conquer right there in the, in the Donbass. Uh, so it won't really improve their situation at all. In fact, we do know from certain sources close in the, to Putin in the Kremlin that Putin has ordered to take and hold Bakhmut at all costs. But why? 
Kherson, I would understand, as it's the next frontier towards uh, Mikolaev and Odessa. Svartova to the north, is, uh, to the north uh, that I've just shown you is really the, the gateway to Luhansk, so I'd understand that one too. But Bakhmut, it's really just a small town with a, a pre-war population of 70,000 people that's been all but leveled to the ground anyway. And it's just unstrategically in the middle of the Donbass as well. Although I am not completely naive, I do know that it would be of a, a, a huge political victory. Uh, still, we don't exactly know why, but it would be for, for the, the Russian you know, media propagandists and Putin himself. Then we'll move across to the, let's see, Zaporizhia Oblast. So a little bit of a, a comedy moment here. So a comedy Oblast, let's say. So there was some footage of some more Coke cones spotted en route from Mariupol to Melitopol uh, in the last day or so. So no doubt Russia is looking to hunker down and really get in on its defenses there with these cheap and always incorrectly installed cope cones. And I'll also quickly add there, and all already wearing away cope cones like they are in, in some other locations, just crumbling away. And on top of all that, it was actually said to have caused a traffic jam on the highway. Now, traffic jams feel like a useless waste of time already. We all know that. But just imagine if you were in a traffic jam because cargo transport ahead of you was transporting these absolutely useless cope cones. That would just be a bad day. And then moving on, so, oh, in fact, Zaporizhia. Take Zaporizhia, uh, the front line, as a good example here. So at the moment, there are still some muddy and wet conditions, slowing down the Ukrainian counteroffensive. So the Ukrainian defense minister said, once the ground freezes over and solidifies, the pace of the Ukrainian counteroffensive will pick up again. So always interesting and uh, quite positive news to hear. And then moving on, so as for the Russian occupied region of Zaporizhia, everything really here in red, uh, Russian forces have been reportedly still uh, trying to push the Russian passports onto the Ukrainian citizens in the region. But as it turns out, the locals are actually quite clued in on what's going on here. Because once you sign up for a free Russian passport, you'll get a free conscription. No, thank you. Then we'll move down a little bit to the Crimean Peninsula. Uh, I've got a photo here where it seems the Russian army has fought to the point where they're now building trenches on the beaches in Crimea. Now this particular trench is located at Chorno Moko, so right there. So it really seems Russia thinks they're expecting a an amphibious assault, a beach offensive if you will. Uh, isn't that cute? Anyhow, so a local took this photo because they just wanted to enjoy a nice leisurely stroll along the beach this morning, but they can no longer. And these trenches aren't actually that deep enough anyway, but notice how perfect they are cut. Uh, that's because it's sand, <laughs> a very lightweight and easily displaceable commodity. But because of precipitation, it, it won't last long anyway. And countless jokes uh, could be made here. I already have one or two maybe floating in my head right now, and I'll be sure to create and add them during post-production quite shortly. Then we'll move across to some news for today. So a former member of the CSTO state, so Azerbaijan, and I'll just mention a, a CSTO state is uh, sort of like the, the Russian version of NATO, which supposedly provides those members with security guarantees, which in real life it doesn't. That's for a whole nother video. In which uh, Azerbaijan, in a move only to anger Russia and Putin, is sending 45 power transformers and 50 electricity generators to Ukraine as part of a uh, humanitarian aid package to assist Ukraine. All as a result, of course, of uh, Russia's recent aggression and strikes on Ukraine's energy grid. Oh, and also, in the upcoming days, a second not yet disclosed aid package will be sent to Ukraine from the same country as well. So, good for them. And in some more Ukrainian aid news, Germany announced it will soon provide its more modern Skynex air defense systems to, in fact, about 180 million euros worth, in fact. 
And you know, aid like this, of course, always goes a long way to help protect Ukrainian strikes, uh, or sorry, I should say Ukrainian skies from Russian missile strikes on its critical energy infrastructure. And in some more news, the popular 90s action star Jean-Claude Van Damme has visited a, a private hospital clinic in one of the eastern uh, Ukrainian oblasts. So it would be really nice to see, uh, and we'll really get more of these uh, massive 1990s action stars over there too. Like I'm talking like the Schwarzeneggers, the, the Stallones, but definitely not the Seagulls. Then moving across to another Russian mobilization blunder. So here we have yet another video. In this case, I've just got the stills. It's a plea from some Russian uh, recently mobilized forces pleading uh, directly to their oblast governor through video format yet again. So we see a lot of these, um, which the guy in this video says, and I quote, uh, our fighters are practically naked from medicine, protection, armor, there is practically nothing, end quote. So all I can say at this point is, what are you doing, Russia? Your soldiers are constantly making video pleas for bare essentials, the barest of essentials. Your army is an embarrassment. Just just give up already. Just, just go home. Just send them all home. Then in a bit of a quick funny to round off the day with, so this one's a, a bus advertisement uh, displaying uh, on the inside of a bus in Russia, appealing to Uzbekistan citizens, and other foreigners too for that matter, offering for the chance to go to war in exchange for a Russian passport. But uh, I know what you're already thinking. For instance, let's see, what, what good is a Russian passport if you're dead? Or maybe even you're thinking, why would I even want a Russian passport? And you'll notice how common the theme is in all of this. Of course, just a moment ago, earlier in the video, I mentioned basically the same situation occurring in Russian-occupied Zaporizhia with the locals there. And it's almost a given to say now that uh, one of Russia's supposed greatest resources, i.e. manpower, because they're meant to have so much of it, is somewhat constrained right now. They're really scraping at the bottom of the barrel in many ways to put troops on the front line and they need them on the front line due to previous conscripts that went before them, they had no training and no equipment. It's actually just a, a vicious cycle, <laughs> that one. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, a like, subscribe. Thanks again for all of your continued support, and I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.